movies, your movies, all movies are always the product of many different inspirations and, and influences, but did this, if you can pinpoint it, how did this one start? Was it the world of yoga? Was it um, the character of Gustavo, all these characters? It was yeah. yoga in the beginning. It was yeah. yoga, the idea of making a movie about the yoga. Yeah. I've been practicing for a long time. Yeah. Um, I, when I started writing the script, it, 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 everything took place in Argentina. But at one point, I decided to move the story to to Chile. Uh, some of the things that, that, that happened in the film happened to me. Um, uh, I don't know, guess which ones. <laughs> 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 uh, like falling into a, what do you call it? Man, man, manhole. Yeah, manhole, yeah, or yeah, yeah. in Santiago. <laughs> um, and when that happened, I think that's when I decided to move the story to Chile. <laughs> And this is your, I believe, is it your first feature shot outside Argentina? Yeah. That's right. And so, yeah. 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 And what did that, what was that experience like? Um, uh, it was interesting. I really wanted, uh, I really wanted to make a film outside Argentina because I felt that I needed like a fresh uh, way of looking at things, um, actors, locations. You know, I always shoot in Buenos Aires, and I know everything maybe too well, uh, and I wanted to have like a fresh. Uh, experience so that's why that's one of the reasons uh, and uh, you know meeting new actors um, working with them in the way I work with actors which is yeah. particular um, working about you know uh, the, 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 the the music of the language the, the different accent different uh, uh, mm, it's uh, Chile and Argentina are two countries that are very close by. They are just divided by the uh, the Andes, uh, and they are very different. But at the same time, they have a lot of similarities, and I liked that combination of things. Yeah, music is a very apt word. There's a particular cadence to you know the the dialogue rhythms and and also just in a larger sense the way the movie the the story is structured, but also but specifically the the, the dialogue rhythms and I don't know people. I, I've read about it, you know, described as sort of like a, you know, a, a deadpan kind of absurdist sort of tone, but you know, and, and or this kind of affectlessness. But I, I don't know. Do you agree with that, or is that? Uh, I mean, there's because I feel like there's a lot of very subterranean feeling in 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 the in the lines that comes out all the more for the the restraint on the surface. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't like overacting, um, and uh, also. Um, I'm very conscious of the rhythm of the scenes, and uh, and it's something that I think about when I write the, the script, when I write the dialogues. I already know more or less, or not more or less, but exactly how 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 that should go, uh, in, in how fast the dialogue should be, when when there should be a pause or not. So it's something that I work on the script already. And then when I rehearse with the actors, that's basically what we do. We they learn that they learn the dialogues while we rehearse the rhythm and the music of it. And you rehearse a lot, I understand. Right? I yeah. try, yeah. For this movie, I had less time because it was in Chile, and most of the actors were very busy. Uh, so sometimes I didn't have a lot of time to rehearse, but uh, but they knew that I needed them. I needed them to have the, the their lines really. You know, something happens in cinema, at least in Argentina and Chile, that 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 actors don't believe that they have to know their lines somehow <laughs> <laughs> and because I, mean, I think it's because they work for television and uh, they give them the script one day and then they shoot the, the next and uh, and they improvise a lot uh, so for me surprising it i still find it surprising sure. but uh, but that's the way it is so i know that uh, i have to rehearse a lot in order for them to really learn right. uh, the dialogues is the idea to internalize the dialogue to such an extent that it's it's second nature and then they're not even thinking about it the, the words necessarily themselves yeah, yeah exactly yeah they shouldn't be thinking about it exactly they should say yeah for me it, it's it's important that they that, that they don't doubt when they say that their lines uh, yeah. yeah and it, it is so interesting because I'm, I'm just and and you're you're not only a filmmaker but a writer of course and 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 you're you're a novelist as well you've had your I'm curious just how the process of yeah, kind of conceptualizing on page, even what you were saying about knowing the way the rhythms are supposed to be. I mean, how yeah, is it? Can you tell us just a bit about the writing 
starting off, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, usually I don't have a, I, I don't know the plot of the film until the, yeah. the, the, the script is finished. Uh, so I, I, you know, the process of writing the script is finding the story in a way. So I, my, um, I'm interested more in characters and situations and then I try putting them together and, 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 you know, trying to make sense of them and, 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 and finding a story or a plot. And that's the way I work. You were mentioning that some of this is, you know, experiences that you had yourself. And I'm, I'm curious about, you know, the, the structuring of, of accidents throughout the story, um, mm -hmm. starting, of course, with the, the folding screen and then, um, and then the, the motorcycle accident, and of course, the, the, the very funny um, recurring gag of the manhole falling. Yeah, and I'm just the, curious. And what, the knee. The knee, the knee injury, and the, yeah. the injury, you know, just throughout. And um, yeah, what can you talk about that as just that inspiration of like wanting, is it, the idea to me seems to be that, you know, however, this is someone who is used to a lot of, a great deal of discipline and order imposed on his life and, and life obviously conspiring against everyone to, you know in that sense. yeah um well actually most of the things uh, like the 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 folding screen falling falling you know uh, that's some that's something that happened in my yoga class uh, <laughs> i didn't see it but uh, a friend of mine told me about it uh the knee injury well that happened to me and i went to a chiropractor and then they told me to go to the gym and to do you know this <laughs> exercises and uh, the trainer at the gym told me that I shouldn't exercise just the legs otherwise I would become like um, <laughs> deformed uh, like exactly. uh, uh, so I put that in the I don't know many things uh, you know or, or, or most of the things really happened to me although of course it's not me there uh, I don't live in Chile I'm not a sure. yoga teacher sure. I'm you know yeah but this is I mean there are really a lot of things that uh, that, that are real in the film yes I'm also curious about just the nature of kind of repetition throughout the script and you know there's that as I was watching the movie again that line of you know he smokes like a chimney and his wife is an idiot so that <laughs> just the repetition of that for funny effect and and just the there's the, rep the the patterns throughout and and you know even when you bring characters into these they're the same characters we get to know them but you bring them into these ever more fascinating kind of uh, configurations and combinations I mean is that also something you don't necessarily know as you're you, is it just how they're going to interact necessarily uh, yeah. when i start i don't but but that's the way um i structure the story uh, the re repetition brings humor usually uh, hopefully <laughs> um, uh, and yeah and putting those things together uh, helps me to find a story in a way i since i don't work a lot I, since i don't work uh, with the psychology of the characters and motivations i, I just have i just have to find other ways to to make the story move forward and yeah and you, uh, as someone who's practiced yoga and you met, you mentioned that and talk about uh, the the yoga the yogis that we see in the film and how did you uh, find them and working with them was that a new kind of experience in your filmmaking yeah uh, well we we have we have to uh, uh, Esteban Bigliardi the main character who plays Gustavo he he's a runner he n but he, he never practiced yoga before so he had we had to send him to to a school and to practice he had a, a he had a, a coach um, and he became a little kind of good but uh, <laughs> after after uh, after shooting I asked him if he kept practicing and he said no <laughs> <laughs> Never again. <laughs> I don't know why, because it's really good for you. But he became good enough to do the full headstand pose. Right. Yes. I mean, and no, he that's... he can do it. I mean, I didn't put it in the film, but he can really, you know, lift his legs like completely parallel, com oh. uh, straight, and uh, and go up yeah. very easily. So he can. He, he's he's good. But he he's quite wonderful in the film. I mean, all the actors are, but but um, him especially, and he has this real kind of you know uh, just the silent clown kind of affect to him. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. And can you talk about just, yeah, I mean, I know he's been very busy and active in recent years, but how did you come to cast him? And I wrote the film him? for him. Wow. Uh, because I, th I thought that he looked a little bit like me. <laughs> 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 Actually, my mother went to see him uh, at the theater a long, long time ago, and she told me that she saw an actor that was really like part of my family somehow and she was like she couldn't believe it and uh, and then I, I really feel a familiarity with him uh, and I wrote the part for him yeah um, yeah I, 
I want to, I'll say one more question before I open it up to the audience, but um, it's interesting because for so much of the movie there is this, you know, these rhythms of the dialogue and the voiceover coming in and then toward the end, you know, there's this, it's not quite silence because the sound, you know, it's when he's on the retreat mm -hmm. and the sound design is actually quite still overpowering and really detailed, but there is this, it, this silence of voices at least. I mean, yeah, just, I don't know, can you talk about, was, um, how did you come to know that the film was going to end or come to a climax of sorts that way? Yeah. yeah. I just think it seems like a really, a very kind of powerful choice. Right. Um, I really don't remember how I came to the end of the story. Um, I, re I, I wanted to have that, you know, that, that part of the film that is when he is in the woods and yes. he gets lost. I wanted to have that. I, I knew that I wanted to have that, you know, in a film with a lost dialogue to have like a, a pause. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and um, at one point I decided that he would fall again. Uh, at the end, and that was kind of risky, I think, and I didn't know if it was going to work until I saw the film with an audience uh, <laughs> one week one week ago. I mean, less than one week ago. Last Monday, I saw it. I saw it for the first time with an audience, and I don't know how it. I, I wasn't here. I don't know if it worked or not. If people, <laughs> but uh, but in the two screenings I, I yeah. I've been to, people really laughed at that moment, and uh, so I said, okay. But I didn't, you know, I didn't cover myself. I, I, it was just one, that shot, and that's it. That's all I showed. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a little risky, but uh, hopefully it works. I, I think it did. But you tell us, and are there any questions or comments on the, uh, questions uh, for Mr. Reitman um, from the audience? Yes, right here. I wondered if you could speak a little to how this film fits in with your other work, your other films, and and your your um, writing. Uh, well, so literature. Um, whether how you think about it, re relating thematically and stylistically, et cetera. Does it you know how, what does it mean to you this movie that clearly is rooted in your experiences? Um, I think the most of my, my my movies share a little bit the same kind of characters and 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 world. Uh, I think uh, um, the the big difference here is that I went to shoot in Chile. I went to shoot to, to another. I went to another country, and then I found uh, uh, I found uh, like a diff. I, I uh, you know I I think of it as cultural appropriation somehow, <laughs> you know, I went there and I just uh, uh, somehow brought my way of working to another place and asked them to become part of my film and, 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 and the actors trusted me uh, and, uh, and they decided to, to get along with the, with, with the project, which was really exciting. Uh, in Argentina, people know me more uh, and they are used to my way of working. So, but in Chile, it was, uh, uh, for me, it was very, very uh, exciting that, that, that nobody doubted. I mean, they, oh, the actors came along and, 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 and they wanted to be part of, of the film. My literary work. Uh, well, I write short stories um, and I publish some books. Uh, and I think it's more or less. I mean, it's, it's it's different, of course, because it's literature. But it's the same kind of characters and the same kind of situations. It's di literature is different because you don't have to think of uh, anything regarding production. You know, <laughs> uh, when I write a script, I know that I will have to shoot that. Then I think of po things that I would be willing to shoot scenes that I like to shoot and uh, sometimes I think about actors like uh, in this case so yeah is there another question someone yes right over here and I'll come to you again in the front sorry hello sir you talked about the how you were writing the script and you knew you wanted to start with a film about yoga but then you said you talked about how just the plot sort of unfolded itself is that literally you started with like scene one and you just started writing and not knowing where it was going or did you have overarching themes you wanted to address and you started stitching it together can you talk about the, the writing process more please right I, I didn't start with scene one no i started uh, where did i start um i don't remember exactly but it wasn't on scene one, scene, scene one no uh, and uh, my process is very messy i mean i i i take notes and uh, i I go back and forth. I uh, 
there is a lot of things that I leave out, and sometimes they come back in a new script. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's not very structured, uh, and it takes me a long time, usually years. Really quickly too, because the editing. I often hear from editors, it's so, much, so much of the writing sometimes comes together in that. I mean, what is your editing process like? Is that drawn out too, or is it, does it usually? usually you know, no, you, usually I, um, I respect the, the script. Uh, I yeah. respect the script. It's very, very few times I change. In, in this film, I think we didn't, we didn't leave anything out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you have a question? I think, yes, go for it. Are you going to embark on a new project in a sooner or later in the future, or are you taking a break? Uh, I don't know really. For the moment, I'm taking a, a little break, and I, I'm not sure whether I'm going to make another feature or I'm going to make short films. Or I'm not sure. I mean, it's been it's been hard to make this one, uh, and uh, making movies is not easy, and it's becoming more and more difficult, especially movies that are not like mainstream or are not supported by a platform. So um, I don't know. I will see. I will see. Uh, I feel more like making short films than making uh, features and also when uh, things are changing so much that when, if you make a short film it, you know it, it will go to a platform as well so everything ends in a platform so it doesn't really matter how long your film is in a way uh, so I think maybe it's more relaxing to make shorter things and going back to the, the days where I was more free Unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, right here. Yeah. Just wanted to know since when you have been practicing yoga and how often you practice this. Clearly, relate to that. So uh, oh, I, I've been practicing since uh, the mid nineties. Uh, I practice. Uh, I started practicing Iyengar now, but after, but I changed very quickly to Ashtanga yoga, and uh, I I had a. a daily practice for a long time. Now I practice a little less. Uh, sometimes I, I used to practice like two hours or two and a half hours a day. Now I, I do much less, but uh, but it's something that became part of my life somehow. I think we have time for one more. Is there another question from anyone? Oh yes, right down here. I just want to know, uh, how was the experience working with a uh, Chilean casting, being you Argentinian, because I know there are you know, two different countries, two different cultures, and it's amazing how you achieve the same rhythm on mm -hmm. each one. So I just want to know how you did that. Yeah. Uh... It's the process that I, that I explained before, like uh, uh, rehearsing and and uh, learning the lines th together with the actors and 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 just correcting maybe sometimes the intonations and and finding the rhythm uh, together. Uh, it was exactly the same process that I do with Argentinian actors. Actually, with with uh, uh, Esteban Bigliari, the actor who plays Gustavo, I rehearse much more than with the uh, Chilean actors, even though he has he doesn't speak that much in the film. But uh, but I really had uh, like a two year process of rehearsing, thanks to the pandemic. <laughs> I think. But we rehearsed and, and 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 we kept rehearsing until he found the right tone. Um, with some of the Chilean actors, it was very easy and very fast. Uh, I didn't have to do anything. They just knew exactly what what to do and how to say things. And with others, maybe the older ones, it was a little bit more like a longer process. Uh, but it was always very, very, very. They were always very nice. And sometimes, of course, they helped me uh, changing some words to to adjust the the, the, the the because we we have different words you know in, in Chile and Argentina for different things it's not exactly the same uh, language uh, and so they help me adapting the the dialogues thank you I think we've heard a lot of curiosity about your prior work and I would actually encourage everyone if you liked La Practica please seek out uh, certainly your most recent feature before this uh, Two Shots Fired which you can watch on a platform movie right. um, and your other films I, I don't know I don't have the information hand exactly well, no, yeah, they, but <laughs> yeah many of my films are a movie not all of yes. them but many, many Julia wanted to ask something oh sorry we'll one more. yes um, I am lucky to know 
Martin's work uh, for many years, but it's the first time that I made the connection and I wanted to share that, of course, there's a repetition that he said, you know, brings the humor. And the repetition is not just in language, but of course, visually, like the same shots, you know, the same kind of frames. But I just realized, listening to Martin, um, that that is the shape of the Ashtanga practice, is the repetition. Oh, it's basically the same series that is repeats. And, and I wonder how much of that informed the writing and even the form of this film. And I'm going to add the question is, Probably the one thing that I did not expect is that huge levitating rock. But it kind of relates to something that does happen after a good practice. So I would love to hear that. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question and very good uh, observation because I never, I, I didn't, I didn't notice that the repetition in Ashtanga has to do, yeah, that, that's very good. And you have to know that uh, that Julia was uh, assistant director in one of my films, in my second film, and also uh, we went, we practiced yoga together in Argentina. <laughs> 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 so she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, regarding the levita levitating rock, uh, that was, I don't know, I mean, it's, it, 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 I never did that before in a film. Um, and I really love it. I don't know. I really love it. I wanted it to. I want to have the poster of the film with that, but it's a spoiler. I can't do it. Um, but for me, is the idea that Gustavo cannot get to the samadhi or you know this high uh, um, moment of concentration or meditation or whatever. Uh, but the rock can. <laughs> It's a wonderful note out to end on. Congratulations, Martin, on your thank film, you. and thank you for being thank here, you. and thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,